Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing the official scientific information that, well, looks like the stuff that DNA and RNA molecules are made out of does officially exist in outer space, and specifically in the asteroid belt. Suggesting once again that there is a slight chance that a lot of the materials that created life on our planet might have come from outer space. But let's discuss this in a little bit more detail and talk about the actual scientific evidence. But let's start with the biology itself. Pretty much everything on our planet, from different small viruses to very large life forms, will contain some kind of a genetic code. We usually call this DNA. And although we know that certain viruses, for example, can also rely on RNA for replication, in most cases both DNA and RNA are made out of relatively similar fundamental building blocks. The building blocks that are also called nucleotides. But the majority of them divided into so-called purines and pyrimidines. And here are the most famous five nucleotides in all life. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, uracil, and thymine. With pretty much all life forms on the planet using most of these to some extent. We use all five. But certain viruses, for example, will only use the ones present in RNA. To be more exact, in RNA molecules, uracil is used instead of thymine, so in certain viruses, thymine is not used at all. But more importantly, they are not just used in DNA and RNA molecules, they are also used in a lot of fundamental proteins in our bodies, including the molecule responsible for pretty much all of the chemical energy, the molecule known as ATP. And so nucleotides are essential and fundamental to all life on the planet. But where did they come from? Were they delivered to early Earth by something, or were they formed here because of the various chemical reactions? Now in many cases, most scientists have always assumed that it was the latter, it was the chemical reactions. With the iconic Miller-Urey experiment we've discussed in one of the previous videos, that you can find somewhere right there or in the description, presenting at least some evidence that chemical reactions could in theory produce something. And so there is at least some evidence that primordial Earth could have created some of these nucleotides. But if primordial Earth conditions were necessary for their creation, this of course also creates a problem for astrobiology. It means that we have to have these Earth-like conditions to create life as we know it. That's a bit of a problem, of course. It kind of suggests that it would be difficult for us to find life elsewhere. But some astrobiologists realize that, well, maybe these nucleotides and a lot of building formations for life were delivered to Earth by various meteorites and various asteroids. Maybe all of the ingredients for the biological chemical soup that created life were actually from outer space. And the proposition, if correct of course, would suggest that life could then spread to other planets, other moons, and potentially be everywhere in the solar system and even everywhere in the galaxy. Maybe the formation of life is not as difficult as we initially thought. And in the past, by looking around various stellar clouds and molecular clouds somewhere out there in the galaxy, the scientists have discovered certain molecules that are sometimes used in life here on Earth. But more importantly, by analyzing various asteroids and meteorites that landed on planet Earth, they were also able to find at least three different nucleotides. In this case, the purines, specifically guanine and adenine, seem to be pretty much everywhere. A lot of meteorite samples collected in the last few years seem to contain them. But pyrimidines were usually missing. Or the uracil was discovered back in 1979, so it was also quite common. But since those original discoveries, for many years the scientists were having trouble discovering pyrimidines, implying that maybe some nucleotides had to be produced on Earth and could not have been produced in space. But obviously not everyone was satisfied with this, and several scientists kept looking. And in this paper, they finally found them. And even explained why we couldn't find them before. While also discovering several other similar molecules, with relatively similar structures that are sometimes used by life on Earth as well. And in this case, all of this was discovered in three separate carbonaceous meteorites by using a new type of analytical technique, an extremely sensitive technique, that was able to extract all of these compounds and prove that they were really present in those asteroids. And the explanation for why they were able to find this and not previous studies is relatively simple. Previously, all of the asteroid samples relied on the formic acid 
in order to essentially dissolve the rock and try to extract some of the material present in the rock. And the scientists believe that this might have destroyed some of the organic molecules, including various nucleotides that were probably hiding in the rock as well. Some of them survived and some of them were detected, but pyrimidines were not. But this time, instead of using acid, they used a very delicate cold water extraction technique for the first time ever, which allowed them to identify molecules that were previously unseen, and in the process discovered all of the nucleotides that were previously hidden to us. But the more important question is, what does this all mean? Well, for one, it implies that we now have found all sorts of sugars and all sorts of nucleotides inside meteorites. Almost everything that we would technically need to produce a successful DNA or RNA molecule or to start producing primitive life. Now, at the moment, nobody believes that DNA or RNA could be produced in space or could even produce more complex molecules. Most of this very likely happened on the surface of the planet, but the building blocks were probably delivered from outer space. And by the way, are still being delivered to the planet even today through things like various meteorites and through cosmic dust. But more importantly, this also proves that this process is going on everywhere in the solar system at least. Maybe even other stars. And so apart from our own planet, from planet Earth, this could have happened around many different planets out there, assuming that a very similar chemical reaction happens around those planets as well. But all of this also implies that photochemical reactions, and specifically reactions in space, seem to play a very important role, or at least might play a very important role, in developing life, complex life, on various planets. There is obviously no evidence for any of this yet, until we go and explore some of the moons or other planets in the solar system, but that's the implication based on this particular study. And this is of course incredible news for a lot of astrobiologists out there, who are hoping to one day discover life somewhere else out there on another planet. Assuming, of course, that the process of forming DNA and RNA and complex life is something that can be repeated once the building blocks are placed in a certain environment. But that's not something we can answer just yet, and that's something we can only answer by once again traveling across the solar system and looking for other signs of life elsewhere. Once we find something else about this, I'll make sure to follow this up in another video. Until then, check out the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.